So hello everyone and welcome to Electronic Technocrat, your own techie guy. So today's video will be based on the topic called as Allen Turing test or so called as the Turing test. In this video I will talk about what exactly was the Turing test, what was the Chinese room argument, did Siri, Cleverbot and Ultron pass the Turing test and the movie which is based on the Turing test. So. Without wasting any time, let's begin. But before that, show us the intro, please. Alright, so welcome back again. So first of all, we will start by knowing who was Alan Turing. Alan Turing, or we can say Alan Matheson Turing, is considered to be the father of theoretical computer science and artificial intelligence. He was also an English mathematician, computer scientist, logician, crit analyst, philosopher, and theoretical biologist. Well, he was highly influential in the development of theoretical computer science, providing a formalization of the concepts of algorithm and computation with the Turing machine, which can be considered a model of general purpose computer. Well, despite all these achievements which Sir Alan Turing got, he was never fully recognized in his home country, if only because much of his work was covered by Official Secrets Act. So it's very unfortunate for Alan Turing that his work was not considered and that too in his home country. Well, that's sad, but in that context, in that situation, it was needed. Alright, so let's move ahead. Alright, so Turing test. So, by now you must have understood from where the Turing test word came from. Now let's understand what exactly was a Turing test or what happened during the Turing test. In this test, there was a human interrogator who was interacting with two players, A and B, by exchanging written text messages in a chat. If the interrogator cannot determine which player amongst A or B is a computer or which is a human. The computer is said to pass the test. As simple as that. The argument is that if a computer is indistinguishable from a human in general natural language conversation, then it must have reached the human level intelligence. That's what the whole test was. As simple as that. So what exactly it was in simpler terms? There was a human who was sitting right in between the two test subjects. So subject A and subject B, for example. Now subject A would have been a computer or a person. Subject B can be a person or a computer. So it can be either of the both. Okay, so the human was sending text messages to both of them in a chat box. So now the task of the interrogator was, or the human, was to know which of the following test subject that was subject A or subject B was a computer and which was a human and if he fails to identify that that means the computer is gonna win the test or we can say pass the test as simple as that alright okay so what exactly theory meant by the test is very much similar to the aphorism by Forrest Gump stupid is as stupid does in Turing's version it would be intelligent is as intelligent says. In other words, what he wanted to explain us is that an entity is intelligent if it cannot be distinguished from another intelligent entity by observing its behavior. Turing just constrained the set of behaviors into discussion so that the interrogator can base his or her decision on appearances. So it was rather very difficult for the human interrogator to know which was a computer and which was a player. So that's the uh, Turing test. Now let's move forward. Okay, so one criticism of the Turing test as a test for intelligence is that it may actually measure whether the computer behaves like a human more than whether it is intelligent. The test has indeed been passed by computer programs that keep changing the subject, make plenty of spelling errors, and sometimes refuse to respond at all. A famous example is Eugene Guzman. Now just as confused as Garfield is in this GIF, you might be confused as well whether Eugene is a computer or a person. Well, it's believed that Eugene is a 13-year-old Ukrainian boy 
who constantly tries to avoid answering questions by making jokes and changing the subject to his pet guinea pig. Let's find out whether he was a computer or a person. Okay, now let's move to the next slide. This slide is a short segment of an example conversation with Eugene Guzman. It involves interrogator and Eugene Guzman. Now let's see what interrogator is asking Eugene Guzman and how it is exactly responding. Interrogator, how many legs does a camel have? Well, Eugene says something between two and four, maybe three. By the way, I still don't know your speciality or possibly I have missed it. Now he's trying to confuse the interrogator, but interrogator instead of getting confused is asking him another question like how many legs does a millipede have? Now Eugene says just two, but the carnival mutants may have them up to five. I know you're supposed to trick me. Now again Eugene is trying to trick the interrogator, but interrogator is not affected. So he says no, I need to know that you're not a chat bot. Please just answer the question straightforwardly. How many legs does an ant have? Now Eugene again answers like something between two and four, maybe three. Oh, what a fruitful conversation. Well, he's trying to be funny. So again, the interrogator is now actually the interrogator is getting a bit more frustrated. Now he's asking, do you understand why I'm asking such a basic questions? Do you realize I'm just trying to unmask you as a robot as quickly as possible? Like in the movie Blade Runner, Eugene says, wait, now he's trying to be funny. Eugene is trying to actually make jokes on the questions being asked to him. So he's trying, trying to avoid the questions and he's trying to change the subject. So basically by now you must have understood that Eugene is not a person. Eugene in reality is a computer program or we can say a chatbot who actually fooled 10 out of 30 judges into thinking he's a real person. Now I think you must have been fooled as well but if you're not then you have a very great sense of understanding of AI but if you are getting fooled by this computer program then you must actually think about your questioning skills. <laughs> so let's move on to the next one. The Chinese room argument. The idea that intelligence is same as intelligent behavior has been challenged by some. The best known counter uh, argument is John Searle's Chinese room through experiment. Well, Searle describes an experiment where a person who doesn't know Chinese is locked in a room, like this guy in the room. Outside the room is a person who is slipping the notes written in Chinese inside the room through a mail slot. The person inside the room is given a big manual as you can see where she or he can find detailed instructions for responding to the notes she received from outside. So argued that even if the person outside the room gets the impression that he is in conversation with the another Chinese speaking person, the person inside the room does not understand Chinese. Likewise, his argument continues. Even if a machine behaves in an intelligent manner, for example, by passing the Turing test as the urine Guzman did, it doesn't follow that it is intelligent or it has a mind in the way that a human has. The word intelligent can also be replaced by the word conscious and a similar argument can be made. Well, I actually agree to it. As you have seen in the earlier uh, conversation that he that is Eugene Guzman, a computer program, had a really short segment of conversation with the interrogator. He is trying to avoid answering those questions by just joking them around or fooling them around. The questions are around. So it doesn't mean that uh, the computer program has got a mind, just like a human brain. But it is basically replaced by a word called as conscious. And a similar argument can be made. Okay. So let's move on to the next one. Can Siri pass the test? Now it's very interesting from here. Let's see whether some of the AI or what we can say assistants pass the test. The first one is Siri. As we all know, Siri was launched on April, oh sorry, October 4th, 2011 with the release of iPhone 4S. Okay, 
So, can Siri pass the test? It's a very interesting question. Uh, the answer may be, probably not. Siri would have uh, to be able to convincingly carry out a conversation with a subject and be able to generate its own thoughts. So far, Siri only works with simple sentences and short phrases and is unable to carry out a full-blown conversation. Siri is easily identified and doesn't feel completely human. According to Peter Nowak of Maclean's, in such regards, Siri is more of a programmed robot than a thinking entity. Somebody somewhere, or more likely, many people somewhere, have spent a good deal of time anticipating and then programming Siri with potential questions and their respective answers, maybe humorous or otherwise. In the future, this might change, but for now, Siri ultimately fails the Turing test. Oh, that's very sad. <laughs> now let's go to the next one. It's Cleverbot. Well, Cleverbot was created by British scientist Rollo Carpenter and was launched in 1997. Since then, it's held over 200 million conversations and has been learning and remembering words ever since. Cleverbot's responses aren't programmed, as its unique feature is that it learns from the conversations it has with humans. Well, exactly Steve Harvey, even I am amazed. It learns from the conversations made by humans and it's actually not programmed. Well, the question again arises, has Cleverbot passed the Turing test? The answer is yes. Cleverbot passed the Turing test on September 3, 2011. At the 2011 Technische Festival at the IIT Guwahati, judges determined Cleverbot passed for human 59.3% of, of the time, with a passing score being 50.05 percentile or higher. So basically, Cleverbot actually gained 59.3 percentage and the passing was 50.05. So it basically surpassed the uh, average score or the passing score and it was declared that it passed the Turing test in 2011 by IIT Guwahati. But does it mean that Cleverbot is intelligent? Well, that's the question everyone must be thinking, right? Cleverbot's developer and AI specialist Rollo Carpenter says, My answer to that question is fairly unequivocal. No, it doesn't mean Cleverbot is actually thinking. Carpenter says, One could argue that there was perhaps a bit of intelligence involved in what is going on. But I think one would have distinguished thinking from the word intelligence. Despite Cleverbot passing the Turing test, there is still a huge difference between Cleverbot and another human. Yes, so even though Cleverbot passed the test, it is not to be said or it is not uh, perfectly said that it was intelligent. Okay, so let's move on to the next one. Ultron, well, he's a, one of the most favorite characters of uh, Marvel uh, Avengers in that uh, Age of Ultron sequel in 2015. Ultron is one of the Marvel's fictional supervillains that featured in the Avengers hashtag 54. He's known for being an artificial intelligence with genius intellect, superhuman strength, flight and more. Most notably, portrayed by James Spader in 2015 sequel Avengers Age of Ultron, this yet again menacing figure starts off as a global defense program that eventually uses its sentience to build an army of robots to take over the world. So he was an evil, right? Can Ultron, again the question rises, can Ultron pass a test? Well, Siri failed the test. Cleverbot passed the test. Now, can Ultron pass a test? Can Ultron pass a test? Ultron could pass, not only due to James Spader's exceptional performance, but because of Ultron's intellect and sentience. He is fully able to philosophize, or we can say converse, and think like a human. If one were to ignore his cold metal outer shell, it would be easy to mistake Ultron for a human. It is important to know that while Ultron is a fictional example, the foundation for his character is deeply rooted in the fear of the machine. 
Even today, the fear that grew out of 1950s and 1960s rise of AI still lingers, continuing to portray AI as some unstable monster like Ultron that will one day outgrow our control. So basically, did Ultron pass the test? Yes, it did. And it's not because it's a character, it's because of its intellect and sentience. That's perfect. So congratulations Ultron and Cleverbot for passing the Turing test. Let's move on. So the future of AI and Turing test. Where to next? Well, that's a really good question. Where, what is the future of AI and the Turing test? What of the Turing test itself? Stuart Russell, an AI researcher at University of California, believes the test is almost worthless. He says, it wasn't designed as the goal of AI. It wasn't designed to create a research agenda to work towards. It was designed as a thought experiment to explain to people who were skeptical at a time that the possibility of intelligent machines did not depend on achieving consciousness, that you could have a machine that would have behave intelligently because it was behaving indistinguishably from a human being. Carpenter also has this to say about the Turing test. He says that passing the test does not prove intelligence but merely shows that a machine can imitate the intelligence. That doesn't mean attempting to pass the test is pointless. Okay, So while Turing test appeared to be the ultimate test of a man and machine, it's since lost its worth. As Carpenter again says, it's a test to imitate intelligence, not a test of intelligence itself. Examples such as Cleverbot, Alexa and Siri may seem intelligent, but we have a long way to go until AI systems become legitimately, legitimately intelligent. Until then, our phones and electronic devices have no intention of destroying all of the human mankind. Okay? so. The future of AI and Turing test is that's what uh, or we can say that's the uh, basic future of AI. So we don't have to actually uh, fear that these mobile phones or we can say these AI systems like Siri, Alexa, Cleverbot are actually are going to destroy the human mankind. So don't worry about it. At least for now. <laughs> so let's move on ahead. Alright, so that's the most favorite part of mine in this whole video. The movie that is based on this fantastic uh, test or we can say this very intelligent test that is the Turing test was The Imitation Game. It was released in 2014 and it is based totally on what Alan Turing did as he joined the cryptography team to decipher the German Enigma code. and. Along with some of the fellow mathematicians, he builds a machine to crack the codes. It is a very good movie. I would recommend all of you to watch this movie. And this is the uh, movie which actually is going to make you understand what actually happened in the Turing test. And the uh, stars in this movie were, as usual, uh, the Benedict, as is usual as you can see, Benedict Cumberbatch is one of my favorite, favorite stars, superstars and Kira Knightley as well as we have Charles Dance, Matthew Good and Mark Strong as well as Alan Leach. So I would recommend every one of you to watch this movie so as to understand what exactly happened in the Turing test. Okay so thank you folks I will meet you in the next video till then keep watching Electronic Technocrats